Okay, so today I'll be talking about ArchSwap is basically the protocol name, but it has since changed into something called Eden Network. Yeah, but ArchSwap still exists, uh, just that it is previously was on Archer protocol and now it's actually being branded into Eden Network. So the overview of what ArchSwap and Eden Network is, so ArchSwap is actually like a DEX EMM extension that can, that can execute trades with MEV protection, slippage reduction, as well as removing field transaction costs. So how they remove the transaction costs is that uh, basically users will have to pay minor tips for trades in order for them to be routed onto the relay network on Eden Network, uh, also known as the Eden Relayer, and for it to be executed. And basically any expired or cancelled trades will not incur fees as compared to like other chain uh, EMMs as well, where they have to pay for gas fees even if their transactions don't go through. This actually helps to provide traders with a guaranteed placement for transactions in ETH, where they'll get priority block space. And this actually helps them to protect against arbitrary reordering, where miners have the discretion to actually order the transactions in order to take advantage of any maybe opportunities. So this actually helps to maximize network security as well by distributing the token reward system for MEV profits back into the block producers for actually helping to allow traders as well as like searchers or any DeFi applications that are using this Eden network to basically choose which priority they want in a particular block. And lastly, this helps to improve earnings for block producers while increasing the amount of consensus level security. So for the token summary, uh, the native token for this is actually Eden uh, in, in the Eden network. And who can use it? Basically, the community, community members, block producers, traders, applications, such as the DeFi applications, as well as searchers will be able to use this token. Uh, where it can be used will basically be on Indian Network or ArcherSwap itself. And how it's being acquired is through liquidity mining. The native token of ArcherSwap, which was previously Arch, uh, which is now being migrated onto Eden. So the Arch token is also being airdropped uh, earlier on when the token was being released as well. And then on secondary markets as well as like block producers will also earn Eden uh, through helping to produce blocks. They have a max supply of uh, 250 million. And the main function for this token is basically for staking and auction for auctioning for block space. And one thing I take note here is that the governance, I didn't include governance here because uh, not every single participant in the network will basically have the opportunity to participate in governance, even if they hold the native token. Yeah, later I'll explain more about it as well. So in terms of mechanism design uh, for the block production, basically how a block uh, or rather how block producers produces blocks is that these are the different uh, priorities where the transactions will be placed within a block. So the first one is actually slot tenants, which is up here. And it is, there's basically three slot tenants where the highest priority will go to the highest uh, slot tenant in order of uh, sequence. And slot tenants will basically have to stick Eden in order to be a slot tenant in a particular block. Right? And these stick Eden will be burnt over time. And slot Tenants will be also will also be able to delegate their so-called slots to bidders through auctions as well, um, where users will be able to bid for all these slot auctions to gain priority in a block space. Then after slot tenants, the next one will be transaction bundles. And transaction bundles are basically based on like the amount of minor tips that is being uh, given as well as the amount of Eden that is being staked. And this actually also helps to provide prioritize transactions compared to other transactions that is uh, from the public mempool or from the EDM layer as well. So these transaction bundles can be submitted through, submitted by DeFi applications or by uh, searches, right, who basically have identified MVP opportunities as well. So subsequently will then be the Eden stickers where users or rather traders who actually stake Eden with a minimum stake of 100 Eden will actually gain priority over the public mempool transactions. And how and this actually provides them with a layer of protection as well as like a higher priority compared to public mempool transactions because uh, their transactions will be sent to the Eden Ray layer, which will be going directly to the block producers in the mining pools. And subsequently, the remaining block space will comprise of like the public Ethereum mempool, uh, where the transactions will then be based on the gas fees. Uh, based on block producers' discretions as well. So in terms of token design, uh, the value drivers. So the native token is actually being used for continuous auctions for claiming priority block space in slots, like as previously mentioned, in the slot tenants as well as for in basically the slot tenants. Lah. And then the subsequent ones will basically be for staking. So staking will provide all these traders and uh, searchers with uh, access to the relayer which will have protection from the public mempool and will also be able to derive better priority and uh, protection against MEPs. And the last value driver for the token is that 
burning tokens from slot tenants and outbidding on the slot tenant, the different type of slot tenants can ensure that the top slots will be rotated to ensure that there's a continuous demand for this particular token as well. So the other thing about token design is that previously for the Arch token, there's about 100 million of circulated supply that was being airdropped and being released. And it was subsequently migrated to Eden, which is now being kept at 250 million tokens. And further token releases will actually go into like block, block producers, liquidity providers, as well as the treasury and like the different uh, percentages here. And all this actually dilutes the early stakeholders, although the early stakeholders' holdings have now been fully vested, right? So in terms of financial incentives, uh, liquidity providers will actually gain like 0.25% of network fees. This is slightly lower compared to like uh, traditional AMMs in Uniswap where they get about 0.3%. And depositing LP tokens will actually gain about 50% APR. And yeah, the last thing about the financial incentive is that any MEV value that is being captured in Eden Network will be redistributed back into the MEV value that is being captured will redistribute 3% of the network emissions from the LPs back into the stakers of Eden. So basically, if traders who stake Eden will also gain, or rather will be redistributed back with the MEV value that is being captured in the network. So finally, for risk. So the first risk that I think is a smart contract risk. So there has been no bug bounties and there's been no audits in place and also no intentions for future audits to take place. And although there has been no exploit so far, this is still an inherent risk like, because uh, you know, the five applications, it's like there has been many incidences where protocols get uh, exploited. Right, because of like vulnerabilities and although there has been no exploit so far it is still a possible risk that traders would have to incur on that and the next one is governance risk so this is about uh, why i didn't add in governance earlier in like the token functions because previously in the archer dao basically anybody who has staked arch tokens will basically have voting power in the governance However, after migrating onto Eden DAO, the DAO now only comprises of like block producers and slot tenants, which does not include the community. So traders who actually stake Eden will still not have any holding power in governance of Eden DAO. Yep. So basically, general community or stake Eden holders have no voting power, unlike in Archer DAO. And so I think this is like not completely community owned and there can be risks in a sense where maybe it would be in the incentive of the block producers and slot tenants to actually vote proposals that is against like the uh, general community of traders where they will be taken advantage of. And I can't really find any like proposals that is actually being made public, even though, you know, the Eden DAO doesn't consist of the community. There's like no information on what is being changed or any proposals that are being put in place. Yeah, so this is like another risk that I thought about. And the last idiosyncratic risk is that token risk as well. So although they, they have like their documents or rather the Eden docs, but all the links that link towards the detailed white paper is no longer available and this, the, the link for it basically just doesn't work. Like. And the other thing is also the tokens distributed from the time the Arch token was actually released that can be swapped for either now is all fully vested as well. So there's also the possibility that the early holders or the early investors will also be able to dump the tokens which can affect the entire ecosystem and the price of the hidden token as well. And lastly, this is another risk that I thought about. So if there are so there's the possibility of insufficient trades. So in like let's say market volatility or in like in let's say bad market conditions, if there's lower transactions from other EMMs, this will basically lower the transactions on Eden as well because Eden is like a layer which actually prioritizes block space for users, and Archsoft is like a Dex EMM extension, right? Uh, so it actually builds upon on existing EMMs. So if there's like insufficient trades, then there'll be lesser users who actually bid for priority block space on Eden as well. And this overall leads to like lower protocol revenue and the value for Eden, which may be a very big downside risk for all the network participants in the entire ecosystem. So yeah, this is the this is all I have for this protocol. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.